All right, guys, so before we jump into this video, I'm gonna start it off with a question, and that is, do you think that we are in a better or worse place as far as the knife, EDC, and gear community goes than we were in 2010? Now, some people may have not even been into knives back then, but even you guys can jump into the comments and just let me know, what do you think about older knives versus newer knives and as far as the community? Do you think we've really improved? Do you think all the new blade steels and you know hyped up you know, Cerakotes and different finishes are really um, beneficial or do you really think that we're no better than we were back then? that's for you guys to decide. I will tell you that I'm biased definitely to older knives and older older knives, older manufacturers, and these older blades for sure. Um, and for me, I think it's more of a nostalgia kind of thing. And when I was coming up in the knife community and kind of, you know, learning about knives, I think um, I was really excited about, you know, these different blades and I wanted these ones in my collection. And certainly I think everyone's going to have a different response or different um, mindset to this kind of question because some people might, once again, not know of the older kind of knives. They may not, you know, understand they may not know of older knives and they may not, you know, think necessarily much about the older times with blades, steel and other such things. And, you know, maybe now and maybe now is the time when you're learning about knives for the first time and these newer knives are kind of what excite you. So for me, like I said, I definitely think that the older knives hold a lot more value for me. And that's primarily because for me, for the most part, you know, newer seals and newer technologies um, do exist, but I don't think that they really make as meaningful an impact for the most part as a lot of people may think. And certainly there are steels like LC200N that are super stainless and, you know, those can be a lot more applicable for certain types of tasks, lifestyles, and needs. But for the most part, you know, things like S45VN, things such as CPM20CV, um, you know, are really not as you know crazy or insane as their old school counterparts and nor do they really you know have such a realistic impact over your life that you know being able to get a little bit longer life out of an edge isn't really as necessary because you're just using them enough to really see those tangible benefits. Now, like I said, I also tend to be a little bit more nostalgic to these older blade shapes. And I think that for me, in the time of like the 2010s, you know, late, tw late 2000s, early 2010s, you know, there were a lot of, you know, kind of advances in knives, but still keeping them very simplistic and very kind of use oriented. I think especially in the American kind of knife scene with American knife makers, you know, we've hit this point nowadays where so many of their knives, um, especially people like Gavco, are being made for aesthetic purposes because they look pretty or because they look, you know, um, in a certain type of way that is, you know, not necessarily functional. They're trying to sell you, you know, art basically that can be used to cut packages and boxes. And well, certainly that is a thing, you know, that is a trend. I really like um, back in the 2010s, like I said, the early 2010s, late 2000s, where, you know, knives were still very much focused on giving you good ergonomics, good performance, good use, and, you know, a really reliable tool, and not so much focused on how to make the prettiest looking tool that you probably won't use out of the most premium steels that are out there on the earth. And, you know, once again, that is a an idea in that um, is a thing, but I really just think that these knives, you know, these really simplistic, really awesome use oriented blades are something that I think our society or like our knife community has totally lost and forgotten. And once again, I think there's a huge trend and push to knives that just look pretty and don't really function as well as these basic simplistic knives do. In addition to, like I said, there's been a huge push towards, you know, these crazy knife steels that, don't get me wrong, you know, I, I do think that newer and better knife steels offer value. And of course, knife companies want to stay competitive with each other. So they're going to offer better and better steels. But at the same time too, you know, realistically, is something like CPM crew wear really going to give you noticeable improvements in your everyday life? 
The answer is probably not. Um, another thing too that I think is kind of an indicator of you know that time frame being so good and so special is you know you see knives like this 273 mini adamas that came out you know a few years ago and realistically this mini adamas is just a scaled down adamas that was dropped once again in that early 2010s you know this knife i think first came out in like 2012 or this design maybe it was like 2011 um but you know at the same time it's like this knife, the, the core design here, while it, it is scaled down and making it technically newer, is really quite, you know, is an older design that has been out for a while and is a you know, kind of classical design. And that's part of the reason why I like the Mini Adamus is it is an old school design that was made a while back, but now just kind of refreshed. And unfortunately, once again, there are performance issues with the Mini Adamus that I'm not in love with. But as far as the actual design, ergonomics and features, I do really like. Um, but yeah, so I think that this time was like a really special time in around 2010 and I just kind of, I'm like 2010 as just kind of the, the time frame, but really, you know, the late 2000s to early 2010s is one of my favorite times in knife, in the knife kind of community. And I think that it was a more simplistic time and I definitely know, um, other YouTubers in the car community have kind of talked about a similar time frame where, you know, back then, you know, car modding was... I don't know, it was still kind of in its infancy and, you know, people weren't making as wild or as crazy, you know, builds as in cars and, you know, taking them to their max. And, you know, it's cool to see what the car community and the knife community have become. I'm not necessarily saying that, you know, the knife community is lost and ruined and, you know, it's not necessarily like that, but I think it was more, um, it just felt more like a family kind of thing where you, your knife community people were your your buds they were your family essentially you know and you all were this this group of people that could get together and talk about knives for hours on end and you once again you had that familial bond but it was due to the fact that you know this one common interest you really liked sharp um, objects that could cut things well and so once again you know the performance that we see nowadays is great similar to cars you know we're really pushing you know um, builds of certain older you know styles and bodies of vehicles to their max you know taking things like the Supra and making ridiculous levels of horsepower out of that uh, platform and you know similarly you see that with knives but there's just kind of this um the small core family type mindset that is definitely gone and we see a lot more luckily in the knife community you don't see like crazy people like in the car community ruining car meets you know you don't really see that too much happening with knives but you just there's a loss of that kind of familial bond that i think was really nice and once again i think the core concept of the 2010s um, early 2010s late 2000s when it came to cars was how could we make really fast performance oriented cars that were still very practical and now we're just going straight to the moon right you know we're, we're saying like how fast can this supra go as opposed to you know i want a really fast supra that can do street races even though that's you know mildly illegal um or just straight up illegal uh you know that was the what the build mindset that was you know you wanted something practical that you could drive on the streets and that would be a really fast car and now we're just you know drag racing them to see how fast we can get it to run a quarter mile right and so i think that's a lot of how knives are you know um we wanted really practical blades that would give us a lot of real life performance so things like s30v were totally viable useful steels that were perfectly fine and um you know very useful steels for practical everyday life but also being a you know really nice well-built and well-performing blade with once again very practical features so anyways you know like i said i think it's kind of a a lost time frame and you know obviously everything has to progress humanity always goes forward and whether that forward is better or worse is subjective entirely 
but definitely I think that there is a lot of merit in these older knives. And once again, for me, like I said, there's a bit of nostalgia, and that's why I really collect and feature so many of these old school blades. Even though I know in my comments, like when I made my hit list for 2023, you know, I was talking about like I wanted Emerson's and I wanted like these different knives, and people were like, you know, Emerson's just aren't that well built, they're not the best. And those comments aren't wrong, you know, they're not, um, they're definitely not wrong about Emerson's, you know, they're not the most high quality. But if you're talking about pure performance and quality, once again, you're kind of missing the point here. It's not necessarily about that. It's more about the history and the heritage of these different makers and the impact that they had. I mean, once again, this, you know, um, Benchmade Skirmish is not the highest performance, you know, uh, amazing knife out there. But what it represents is a time that is long gone and, you know, a time that we'll never have back. And I did a video, you know, on knives that they should bring back and the Skirmish and the Browse Blade Silent Soldier were, were two knives that I mentioned in that video. And once again, we'll never see the Browse Blade Silent Soldier. And nowadays, like, good luck trying to buy one. And even, you know, like the Browse Blade Silent Soldier is a slab of D2 uh, tool steel. It's not the best or most fantastic knife. Once again, very similar to this Blackwood design skirmish. And even the real Neil Blackwood skirmishes aren't the best knives out there, especially um, in performance considering today uh, or the today's standards. But if there was a Neil Blackwood custom skirmish that came up for sale and I found it, you better believe I'd be buying it because I really love the Blackwood design skirmishes. I think they're really indicative of that time time frame in the knife community and I think that they are really cool knives overall. So it's it's one of those things that, you know, I really like this kind of heritage and history of these knives and what that time meant for knife collecting and knife EDCing, if you will. Um, and nowadays I think we've definitely veered off that path and it's far more consumeristic as opposed to, you know, far more of a collector kind of community. And I think once again, drawing a lot of parallels to the car community, I think it's very much that way uh, nowadays, you know, where it's very much uh, consumeristic as opposed to really being for the community. And so when you saw a lot of, um, you know, car mods happening back then, they were, you know, fabrications by small shops and workers that just wanted to see something come together, where now you see, you know, Chinese plants pumping out really cheap turbos for, you know, your, um, for your Subaru WRXs. And so once again, it's it's not necessarily a bad thing, but you know, in that time frame, I think it was a far more special time. And um, once again, you know, it's where the community really wanted to see things come together and they, you know, built those things as opposed to, you know, consumerism happening and you know, Chinese manufacturers pumping out really cheap products that you know, people can just buy off of Amazon. So anyways, guys, that is kind of my rant about 2010, but with knives, that's kind of what that time frame looked like for me, at least in my opinion. And once again, other people might have other viewpoints of that time frame, but I know that there's a lot of uh, larger knife tubers that have come to existence, especially in the mid 20 teens, and you know, really kind of changed the mindset of the EDC community. And so this is what the EDC community was for me, still is for me, and um, I don't think it'll ever change. So, at least for me, of course. And so, yeah, um, definitely not the largest fan of, you know, those more popular, more, you know, iconic um, knife tubers that have kind of taken over the industry. Um, but yeah, and so anyways, guys, as always, God bless, and I'm out.